good? So we had a presentation from Supercell scheduled for now, um, but the gentleman hasn't shown up, so I'm afraid that's not going to happen. But Maria from Plain On is going to step in and move her presentation forward. So she's talking about user acquisition, doing it themselves and successfully. So if you've got a game in the market, this is potentially the most important thing you can do. So Maria, look forward to your presentation. Yeah, thank you, Paul. <laughs> thank you for coming. Um, I'm Masha from game development company Playcourt, and today I will speak about Facebook ads. Actually, I will share um, our tactics for user acquisition that we use in Playcourt, and um, um, I will talk about uh, an example, a successful example of uh, how we reached uh, top 100 uh, grossing on Facebook. So uh, actually, you know that Facebook is a high quality um, source of traffic, but uh, not all companies uh, using user acquisition in-house. And we do it uh, in Playcourt without any agencies, without any market partners. We do it by ourselves. So uh, let me start from a little intro of our company. Actually, Playcourt has started in May 2009 in St. Petersburg from two people. And uh, now it's stitched together more than 80 talented people on staff. Um, during all these years, Playcourt uh, have develop, uh, developed more than 20 projects, and six of them currently live. You must be heard of such titles like Super City, <laughs> Knights Clash, Clash of Heroes, uh, Warzone Titans, and today I will talk about our recent title, Tropic Storm. This is a strategy game on Facebook. It was soft launched in October last year, uh, the global launch took place in November, and uh, by the end of the year, we reached uh, top 100 grossing on Facebook. And of course, that was done with uh, successful user acquisition. But uh, let's uh, ask the main question here. Why do we need user acquisition? Uh, this is the distribution uh, for Tropic Storm that, that we got with Facebook traffic. Um, so you can see here the clear answer that paid users uh, uh, bring us the revenue and the revenue is very high. Uh, the 70% of uh, revenues is coming from uh, paid traffic, from users that we bought. That's why we need user acquisition. And uh, I would like to share the six uh, main issues that you will face uh, when you started to work with user acquisition. Of course, everything has started, uh, should be started from uh, money, from budget. Uh, mm, no, we don't use budgeting in play court. We have another approach, uh, which is based on return on investment. Actually, all the money that you uh, spend for user acquisition is like an investment, and we need to focus on returns, on return and investment. So uh, I would like to share how we do, uh, how we do calculations uh, for return and investment. Uh, actually, during all these years, uh, our analytical team uh, uh, analyzed a lot of data, and we find out that the first day, uh, uh, user behavior in the game, um, in terms of revenue, of course, is highly re related to the user um, behavior for in, in future. So uh, uh, the base for our approach is to analyze seven days revenue. What do we do then? Um, as I said, um, user acquisition spend is like an investment, and we need to decide how many days we need to wait for uh, returning our money. So in Playcourt, we decided that we are ready to wait for 180 days. 
So uh, based on seven days revenue from our users, we are ready to um, predict how much uh, money we, we will receive uh, in 180 days. So our solution is to use a specific multiplier, um, which is uh, showing how much our revenue will grow. And then we, are, we, are, we can just uh, calculate our return on investment. Here are formulas um, that we use to just support what I'm just saying. So the main uh, idea here is to keep your return on investment higher than 100%, of course. And you need to calculate return on investment in terms of targeting, in terms of separate campaigns, and of course, for all uh, your user acquisition activity. So that's our approach. Um, and then after we decided about money, we are ready to come to details. This is targeting on Facebook. Um, actually, I think that uh, most of you have already started user acquisition campaigns on Facebook and you know how it looks like. So uh, I will just uh, share how we do this uh, in detail. Uh, everything uh, should be started from defining your target player, your target user. Of course, it depends on project. And you need to decide what age is he or she, um, about gender, the main question, and the, in the interest of your user. And of course, your, uh, the games uh, that your user is playing. Uh, after we decide about this, uh, we can uh, take a little uh, test. For example, Tropic Storm is a strategy game, and um, during all these years we worked with strategy games and we know that male audience is our main users. So the gender was obvious. After that, we need to decide uh, how old are our users. Of course, we are focused on money, on return on investment, and we need to find out which users bring us more money. And we uh, decided to keep a little test, uh, which was targeted for users uh, who uh, with uh, ages, uh, split of, uh, for um, five, uh, four or five years basis. And after that test, uh, we find out that users who are older than 30 years are paying uh, much more than uh, younger people, younger males. And after that, we, are going we were going to start our first campaigns, which were targeted for males who are older for than 30 ages. And we know that uh, Facebook algorithm, al algorithm for optimization works much better with uh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> With uh, um, great potential reach. So we need to uh, include all these people for our campaign. Uh, after we decided with age and gender, uh, we are ready to think about geos that we will um, target. The first uh, soft is a soft launch. Of course, it should be made for a limited amount of countries, and for Tropic Storm, we started with Australia, and then go to Great Britain. We were focused on English-speaking market. When for global launch, uh, we started with top locations with English-speaking uh, people, um, for example, in United States and Canada, and then uh, we were already uh, with localization of our games. Uh, we started to uh, use other targetings with. Uh, a bit little countries, uh, but with uh, language targeting for the specific languages. Uh, yeah, for Tropic Storm, we, ha we, we have eight languages, so we were uh, able to use really wide targeting on JSON language. And here is uh, the just, um, distribution for our top countries where we spent a lot of money. Of course, it looks a bit obvious, but yes, those users in these countries really play. 
and uh, we still uh, buying users in these countries. Uh, the next and the main uh, thing on Facebook uh, is to target users who will play. Of course, we need players who will play and pay in our game. And Facebook provides a great feature uh, with targeting uh, users based on their behavior on Facebook. And uh, during a lot of tests, uh, we find out that those two groups of uh, targeting, uh, high spenders and frequent spenders, they worked uh, very well for us. Uh, then it goes uh, the very interesting question about interest of your users. Uh, Facebook also provides a great um, amount of targeting uh, opportunities, and we tested uh, most, of, most, of, uh, most of them. Um, similar games, um, interest groups, specific groups of strategy gamers, and um, players who just prefer canvas gaming. And uh, after a lot of tests with these, we find out that similar games where we use namely keywords of those games working really great. So we, we're just focusing on this targeting at the moment. After we decided with targeting, we are ready to think about audiences. This is another feature that Facebook provides and it's a really interesting one. Uh, the first, is custom audiences. Um, in order to uh, collect custom audiences, you need to implement Facebook standard events. And uh, one feature of custom audiences is to exclude, uh, to exclude them, use them for exclusion. We have collected uh, custom audiences of people who already launched our app, and we uh, used the highest period of time that Facebook uh, allows. It's 180 days as well. Um, you know that uh, uh, when you're creating campaigns on Facebook, it allows just to use standard uh, settings for excluding users uh, who also uh, who already using your app but it seems it's not enough. Uh, and when we started to uh, exclude uh, people who already use uh, our app with custom audiences, our campaigns uh, worked much better. Another opportunity with custom ad, uh, audiences is to use them like a feed for lookalikes. We tried um, with Tropic Storm uh, to use Facebook event purchase, and based on those data, we collected purchasing users for the highest period of time uh, for 180 days. Um, also, uh, Facebook data is okay, that's fine, but your own data is uh, much greater. Uh, you can trust them better. So we also trying to uh, use custom audiences with uh, uploading IDs of our users. And here you can, of course, um, use different parameters like uh, uh, payments, of course. And after we tested uh, these custom audiences, we find out that purchasing users, just with Facebook data, they're working better. Uh, but um, when you're using purchasing users for lookalikes, it's not enough to have only um, custom audiences. We tested um, lookalikes with crossings. Uh, Facebook um, managers, they advise to use lookalikes without any additional targeting. But we just uh, have a little test to, uh, to check this uh, opportunity. And we find out that 1% lookalike with uh, cross Cross, uh, cross with interest, uh, as I said, uh, interest, it means keywords of similar games, worked really better. Also, we tested uh, nested lookalikes, uh, where we used 2% uh, minus one, and three minus one, and still 1% lookalikes worked pretty well, comparing to other groups. 
Uh, and the last uh, thing, and <laughs> one more uh, issue for user acquisition, and maybe the main one, is created. Uh, in terms of placement distribution for Tropic Storm, uh, we have uh, a bit higher rate uh, for uh, right column. Um, and there is several reasons of that. Uh, you know that right column is pretty little images on Facebook, but they still work. And um, we have on right column a lower competition with other advertisers. So um, for right hand side, um, we have lower prices in terms of uh, cost per install. And it still uh, brings a lot of money. But on newsfeed, we have a, a, a high competition with brand advertising. And we losing um, in terms of CTR, for example. And still a rate for newsfeed a bit higher than uh, we have on right column. So uh, usually right column we use for tests, for tests of uh, different concepts of uh, creatives and so on. But newsfeed have uh, a higher rate of return on investment. Uh, then it goes to uh, ad format. Uh, by stand, we have a distribution uh, between static carousels and video ads. And static ones work uh, better for us in terms of money. Uh, of course, carousels and video, we also trying and testing, but um, those uh, ad formats are not so uh, effective for us as the static ones. So we still focused on static and trying to test different carousels and video content. And I would like to uh, share some tricks that we used for Tropic Storm that worked uh, in terms of creatives, of course. The first one is aiming sight. Any object for aiming sight looks much better and works much better in terms of CTRs. Uh, another one is bright spots. So if you have like uh, maybe boring composition, you can add uh, a little um, things like arrows, circles, or something, uh, which would uh, claim more attention of user. And uh, the last trick uh, is to use realistic weapons. Actually, it's not uh, uh, a picture from a tropic storm, it's just realistic helicopter. Uh, and we also tried warships, tanks, and so on and so on. And those ones work much, much better than uh, mm, assets from the game itself. And so the trick for right hand uh, side is to use uh, one clear object. And maybe that because um, of peripheral vision or something, uh, users with small images pay more attention to clear and um, great objects. And one more thing about uh, creatives, of course you need localization. Uh, we always use in localized text and call to actions, and those uh, images in different countries with specific language targeting works better. And uh, I would like to pay some attention to ad text. Sometimes uh, people saying that uh, they do not um, work, but uh, we find out that by um, simply optimizing ad text, you could. Uh, make your CTRs higher and your CTIs uh, lower. And mm, just some tricks here. You can use uh, questions and exclamations for ad title and uh, the supportive um, text for your image in ad body. And the last main issue of user acquisition is tools. Uh, when you are ready to scale, it's better to use the preferred marketing uh, de developer. Uh, this is a specific uh, marketing partners which uh, support Facebook ads, and they provide a bit better decisions for scaling your ads. Of course, it uh, costs money, but it also 
um, bring you um, a quality for your user acquisition campaign. In QuakeCode, we use many events, EMV, and it's really uh, uh, it helps us to save uh, our time for just routine uh, activities with Facebook ads and to pay more attention to efficiency to our return on investment. So um, I have shared um, all these measures. We have covered them. And uh, during the third three months of perfect storm, uh, by concentrated on these measures, uh, we have received those results. So uh, in October, there were a soft launch in two countries. So here we have uh, a little amount of conversion. Uh, and you can see here uh, a bit higher cost per install. But in November, when we started uh, localization and going with uh, new geographies and started to use interest targeting more actively, we uh, have lowered our cost per install and uh, make uh, our conversion rate higher. In December, after we collected a lot of information about our users and uh, we were able to use lookalikes, we really uh, increased uh, the amount of conversion and received a higher conversion rate and got really low cost per install comparing to the first month. And during all these months, we uh, had um, positive return on investment. So what I'm just going to say here, to make uh, user acquisition on Facebook by your hands, by yourself, it's possible. You just need to pay more attention to details. So thank you for your attention. <laughs> Thank you. I think that was super impressive. Very nice of you to share the, the techniques and, and the actual numbers at the end. So very, Thank very you. interesting. Thank you. Um, she's done it. If you want to ans ask some questions, great opportunity. I'll ask one question while these uh. people think about it. It's interesting. At, at the beginning, you showed that you're getting more organic downloads than paid but the paid was generating much more revenue. Yes. And is this because just you're able to target exactly the right people and therefore they're more likely to, to spend? Because it, it, stri it strikes me that in, in a lot of places people are saying we want featuring or, or whatnot and you get lots and lots of you know, downloads through that, but it's not targeted. So here I'm really showing that if you target, you're gonna get the results. Yeah, and we need to pay really uh, more attention to details like uh, similar games, games tar targeting because, you know, um, when we are targeting high spenders on Facebook, everyone wants to get those users. Everyone's ready to pay for them. But it's like uh, a pie. You need to bite, bite the piece from other side. So you just need it to find out your core audience. And uh, with the help of keywords, on Facebook, you can do this. Very good. Anyone else? Maria, thank you very much.